Hello and welcome to a special edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. It's Canada Day! Woo! <laughs> to celebrate Canada Day, we're gonna bring to you a movie that's Canadian, 1982's The Incubus. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we're drinking Tarman Black IPA. Mmm, nice for a 40 degree day. <laughs> yeah. Drinking all this heavy black beer and it's like the hottest day of the year. <laughs> Incubus is directed by John Hole, and he's done a f quite a few staple horror movies. The Legend of Hell House, Hammer Horror Film, Twins of Evil, he did Watcher in the Woods. This movie stars John Cassavetes, and again, he's a, quite the veteran actor, but uh, the most notable movie he was in would be Rosemary's Baby. Along with him is Carrie Keene, and she was in lots of stuff, but I have to mention <laughs> the made-for-TV kung fu movie. She's in that with David Carradine. The Incubus starts off a young couple who go to a quarry. Go for a little dip. I can use a dip right yeah. now. <laughs> he tries to get a little fresh with his girl there too. He's not having any of it. Bitch. <laughs> First line of the movie is, you bitch. <laughs> his girlfriend walks over to this run-down sort of shack that's there. And she gets violently attacked by something. He goes in after her. And he gets whacked in the face with a board with nails in it. Yeah. From here we get introduced to Dr. Sam Cordell and his daughter Jenny. Sam Cordell gets called to the hospital. The boyfriend had died, but the girl is still alive. She was violently raped. Her uterus was ruptured, but Sam can't find any sperm. There's kind of the local museum. One of the women that works there gets violently attacked and raped as well, but this time she gets killed. Upon examining her, Sam notices loads of sperm, more than what he figures is just from one man. There's a reporter that's also coming around too because she's getting wind that these attacks are happening. Sam takes a look at her and reminds him of his dead wife. She looks almost exactly like her. Yeah. They get a little chummy. Creeping on her. <laughs> when they go back to his house, forces himself yeah. on her and kissing her and everything. Can I at least have a drink? No. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Why? From here, there's a farm. There's the dad and two daughters. They hear something in the distance in the barn. So the dad goes out, he's got his double-barreled shotgun. Something grabs him and he ends up shooting his foot with the shotgun. <laughs> he blows it right off. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets thrown right out of the barn. One of the daughters is having a shower. Boom! Something attacks her right through the glass of the shower. Her sister on the main floor hears this and she's in a wheelchair and she goes up to investigate. She sees blood kind of coming out. She sort of backs up and boom! The door to the bathroom flies off. Right off the hinges. Yeah. Man. Laura Kincaid reporters decided to do her own research. She tells Sam similar rapes and murders happened about 30 years ago in the same town. We then see this weird movie theater and <laughs> all these weird looking young kids are sitting there watching this music video. The worst looking disgusting bathroom. I, I would never take yeah. a leak in this thing. Sits down on the toilet like Ugh! She sees a shadow underneath the stall door and these big hairy monster arms grab her <laughs> by the legs and yank her out. Police come to investigate and you see like the aftermath of this bathroom. The cop says well there's no way a man could have done this. Sam's daughter Jenny has his boyfriend named Tim and he's been having these weird dreams. Tells Jenny that every time he has one of these dreams somebody ends up dying. He might be the one committing these murders. Sam kind of gets the police and Tim all together question him and of course the police don't believe him. The head policeman doesn't want to listen to any of this and he gets in his car. Sam confronts him and says I'm gonna induce a dream and you better beware because there's gonna be a rape tonight. And that's where we're gonna end the plot point. So if you want to see what happens with Tim and Sam, Jenny and the reporter, keep watching 1982's The Incubus. So this movie was based on a book, a 1976 novel by Ray Russell. There's a lot of subplots in the movie. They begin to go somewhere yeah. and then they kind of just end. Sam's wife dying yeah. and, and the reporter looking like her, like it doesn't really go anywhere. Right. But I'm sure in the book it probably was fleshed out a lot more. When uh, Sam gets everybody together with the old lady too, right, and she starts giving the cop shit. Yeah. I put you into this position 30 years ago and I can take you out. Yeah. Yeah, like, where does like, that come from? Yeah, Mark? like, things like that, but it's forgiven. This movie has a very original story. I think that's what makes this movie so cool and so unique. The twists and the turns, right? More like a whodunit, more 
yes. of a mystery. An excellent job in this movie of treading that fine line, right, between the real, like you have the, the rapes and the murders, but yet it goes into the unreal with the supernatural, witchcraft stuff, the monster arms, the dreams. All the murder slash rape scenes are really intense yeah. and really unsettling. Like it does its job of, of making you feel kind of uneasy. Like you see these women suffering. The woman in the library gets raped and she's being pushed up against that glass. And then there's that whole slow motion thing where it's like it's slowed down and she's screaming and there's all that echo and right. it's like, whoo, it's intense. It stays serious throughout. And like you mentioned, right, it, it can't get jokey because when you're dealing with the unnatural yeah. and stuff like that, you need it to be serious. Yeah. The cast of this movie is, is really good. And especially John Cassavetes as the lead role, he does a really good job of kind of anchoring it down. and Even sometimes a little creepy. Mm -hmm. like yeah, he's, he's kind of got like a smile yeah. on his face almost. Like when he's creeping on the reporter there, it's like, yeah, I <laughs> trust him, trust I don't you. know. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of neat because everyone's a suspect. So yeah. even the main character who you're invested in who can't be a suspect kind of comes off a little creepy right just to kind of throw you off a little bit uh, the music for this movie is really good and not just the music like the score but the music that people listen to in the background in this movie like you said right. that farmhouse scene mm -hmm. that weird music that's in the background <laughs> like it's like what kind of it's a such an odd choice but it works the movie theater scene where they're watching that samson video vice versa <laughs> bruce dickinson's old band before he was in iron maiden and speaking of heavy metal and horror we'd like to make a shout out to a fellow canadian on canada today and a horror movie lover chromium dioxide radio he's got a great channel it's mostly about metal music but he has a really good episode about metal and horror movies. And keep your eyes out in the movie theater for movie posters. Oh yeah, there's all sorts of cool horror movie posters. Also, this movie's got a wicked twist ending. So you must, you must keep watching. And you probably won't guess the twist either. No, yeah. no, and that's the thing. There's tiny hints and clues throughout the movie too, which it took me watching it twice to really catch everything. I love movies like that where you have to watch them again. <laughs> and every time you watch it you pick up on something a little exactly. different that you missed last time. This movie's a lot like The Entity, Superstition. Good underrated Canadian horror film to watch on Canada Day. Pop in the Incubus. Doesn't matter if you're Canadian or live elsewhere in the world. You make sure to keep drinking. Especially on Canada Day. <laughs> yeah. A.